Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dylan Ray again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you again for joining today. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to ask you, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, to please do so by just clicking on the button below and hitting subscribe because it's really going to help me in bringing you a lot more content. Today I'm really excited because I'm going to do video two of my new series on creating a TCP server and creating a TCP client that is going to allow me to work with a peer-to-peer -peer communication when I'm actually drawing in VR. So for those of you who haven't seen those videos, I've been creating a prototype in VR that I can actually draw in VR. So what I want to do with this series of videos is to be able to have people join me and then draw at the same time. So let's actually jump into my computer and I start working on the, on the second video, which is going to be creating a console application, which is going to act as the TCP client. Thank you guys. Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back. So let me show you what we're going to be doing today, which is to actually create that client as a console application. So on the previous video, I showed you how to create the TCP server that we're going to be using for my VR experience. And then in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new project, which is going to act as the client for the TCP server. So let's go ahead and get started. So I have the server running. I'm actually going to stop it so that we can create the client as well. So if I go back one directory, we can see that we have our Unity TCP server created in there. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create the client. So I'm going to do another console application to do that. And I'm just going to say that name new console. And we can just say Unity TCP client. And we need to tell it that this is going to be the name. So I'm just going to do that. And then if we do an LS, we should ha now have the server and also the client. We can also see it by looking in the Explorer. All right, so the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm not going to create a class for this. I'm just going to keep it simple and do everything in the program. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a static method that is going to allow us to attempt a connection with the server. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, OK, I'm going to create a public method and just call it private because this is, this is the only place where we're going to be calling it. And I want that to be inside the class. So I'm just going to say private static void and then we can just call it connect client and it's going to take a server so it's going to be the ip address of the server and then we're also going to need to display and send a message so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to say a string and then the message that we're going to be sending to the to the server okay the next thing that i'm going to do is i'm also going to do a try and a catch just in case we get any exceptions because I know the first time nothing works. So this is going to at least give us some information if we get something incorrect. And then in this case, I'm just going to do a generic exception. Awesome. And then I'm just going to say console that right line. And then we can just say, OK, we can just int string interpolation. And we can say exception. And then we can just wrap this exception around. And then semicolon to end it. Then I'm also going to do console that read so that we don't close, you know, connect and close right away. I want to I want to stop and see what the responses are. So that's what we have going on right now. And then the next thing that I need to do is I need to specify the port that I want to connect to. So I did server. Let's go ahead and also do port. And then for port, I'm just going to do an int. So this one is going to be the port. And then the next thing that I need to do, just like I did on the other, on the server, I need to create an instance of a TCP client. And it looks like our, my plugin is doing its job because it pulled it up. Awesome. And then I'm just going to call this one client equal new client. And then we need to tell it where the server is and also what the port of the server is. And we don't need to give it the message yet because we need to actually get the stream from the client. So the next thing we need to do is we just need to do network stream. And let me make sure that that work. And let me just do that one more time. Network is stream. And for some reason, it's not finding it. And let me make sure. That's the problem when you get used to the plugin. OK, let me just look in the server and see what I did for the server on the network stream and if we go down I can I can find it here and it's going to be part of the system.net sockets and we can do system.net sockets which is the one that I have in here okay let's go back to, to our client and I'm just going to manually add it 
which I already have it. So let me see, system.net sockets is the one that I have. I think this is just complaining because I haven't typed in the variable name. And then, yeah, that's what it is. And then client, then we also need to get the stream from the client. So I'm just gonna say get stream. And for some reason my IntelliSense just stopped working. So that's another thing that don't get used to doing that. <laughs> Because you you're gonna you're gonna regret it regret it. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna actually send multiple messages to the server. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do a while loop. We're gonna do a count, and then as long as we have sent you know three messages to the server, then we can close out of the TCP client. Okay, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to get the message that we're typing in here, but we need to convert that to bytes, just like I did on the on the server. Remember that when we're dealing with sending messages to through the stream, we need to convert everything to bytes. So I'm just gonna say data system that text encoding encoding that and we're gonna do ASCII because that's what we're doing on the server. Get bytes and then we're gonna get the bytes from the message. We also need to write it to the stream because that is the stream that is communi that is connected to the client. So we're going to do a string that write, and then we need to say what we're going to be writing, which is going to be our bytes, zero, and then we're going to say data that length. So at this point, we're writing to that, we're writing to the client as soon as we're connecting. And in this case, the client, this is going to be this client talking to the server. So we're sending information from this client up to the server. Awesome. And then we can just say console that write line. We can say send, and then we can tell it what information we're sending. So let me just do my string interpolation. And then what I'm gonna say is, it's gonna say, okay, this is the message that I sent to the server. Awesome. And then now what we need to do is we need to get the response from, from the server. So to do that, I'm going to create a new, I'm gonna use my data here as well. I'm gonna create a new by array. And then this one is gonna be 256. Awesome. And then I'm just going to do, give me my response. It's going to be a string. And we're going to start it with empty. Then what I need to do as well, I need to get the bytes from the response. So I'm going to say, you know what? I need to get a string. And actually, this is going to be an integer. It's going to be our bytes. And then we're going to read the information from the stream. And let me make sure that I type that right. And we're going to read the data. 0, comma, data, that length. Awesome. So this is going to be the response that we're getting that we're getting from the server. So if you look at the stream, this is a stream from the client. We're writing to the stream. We're reading from the stream. The reading from the stream means that the server is sending, sending us information. And then we are basically reading that information here so that we can display it as well on the client site. Now we need to make it readable so that it makes sense for, you know, for the console.write line. It's going to say text, encoding, and then we're also going to use ASCII. We're going to use our get string. We're going to say data, zero, and then we're going to ask how many bytes we have, which is the bytes that we are getting from reading the information from the server. All right, so then the next thing that I need to do is actually write it. So I'm just gonna copy, let's just copy this, and then this one can be the data that we're receiving. So I just say receive, and then of course we need to tell it the response that we're receiving. Awesome, and then I'm just gonna you know sleep for a few seconds before we get that next message. So I'm just gonna say sleep, and then we can just say sleep for two seconds, So which is gonna be 2000 milliseconds. And then we're gonna do that. We're gonna write to the stream three times and then we're gonna wait for the response from the server and then it's late for two seconds. And then the next thing that I'll do is I'm just gonna close the stream and let me make sure that I'm using the correct method. Yeah, it looks like my IntelliSync is gone for some reason. And then client that close. That close, awesome. So that's basically everything that we need to do. So let me just give you an overview of the connect client. We are creating, this connect client is gonna have to be called from within main, but for now we have a method called, it's called connect client. 
and then we're connecting to the server on this address with this port and this is the message that we're sending we are getting we're creating a new tcp client because it's it's going to be the one that is connecting to the server we're getting the stream from the client we're starting at zero meaning that we're going to have a count at zero because we're going to be sending multiple messages we're going to get the messages in bytes we're going to write those bytes to the stream which is going to send that information over to the server we're going to write it to the console so that we can see it here we're also going to get create a byte array of 256 we're going to also create a response which is going to start with empty which just thinking about this we can just do we can just do this we don't need to do it that way and then once we do that we're going to get the bytes from the stream because it's going to give us information that the server is getting and then let me do this again and then we're going to make it readable by just using the ascii that gets stream with data starting at zero and then the number of bytes that we're reading from from the data so and then we're basically writing to the console so we can see the response and then sleeping and then closing the stream and the client and remember that we're doing this three times so that's everything that we need to do as far as like the implementation to connect to the server so now what i want to do is i want to have multiple threads talking to the server so i want to have multiple clients so one way that we can do this we can create a new thread which i'm gonna do with creating also an action and we're gonna just use a lambda to do that and then semicolon semicolon at the end awesome so here what i'm gonna do is i want this to be a background thread so i'm just gonna say thread and then current thread not current context current thread it's gonna be you can specify whether it's going to be a background thread or not. So I'm just going to say true, which is going to be, and then we're going to call our connect client. Then we're going to give it an address. So remember the address that we set on the server is going to be 127, which is going to be our, our localhost, the 0, the 0, the 1. And then we need to give it an IP address as well. Not an IP address, a port, a port as well. So if you remember, we did, if we go in here, it was 13,000. And for now we can hard code it but at some point we we need to pass it in as, a, as an argument or or from configuration okay so that that's how we can con that's how we can basically connect and we're also going to need a message so on the message i can just say okay this is going to be the client number that we are using to connect so we can do something like this this is going to be client id let me go ahead and do client id and we know that the client id is going to start at one so we can just say client id at one sending a message awesome and then that should give us the first client connection and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to just do this multiple times for multiple clients i'm going to do client two client three and then client four and we should be able to basically so we're going to have four different threads running at the same time and then they're all going to be talking to basically to the, T the tcp server at the same time so what I'm going to do is, I could do it here, but it's going to be hard to see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my terminal and I'm going to just clear the terminal and I'm going to show you how this works. If everything compiles and I'm going to add, I'm going to add here and we can probably have four threads running in here. We can have another four running in here, possibly. Let's just, let's just go crazy and do tons of messages. Okay, so I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do that here. And I haven't tested these. Let's go ahead and just do two for now. And then, so we're gonna have a server with eight different threads. So this one is going to be, we're gonna need to connect to, we need to go into the Unity TCP server folder. And we're gonna have to make sure this builds, which it should build because that's what it did before. Okay, so that one's building fine. And then in here, let me just go ahead and do B, wd so that i can get the path and I just do that and then if, instead we're going to go to the unity tcp client let's just clear it and then pwd i just get the whole path here and let me just copy that one more time and i'll just clear it there we go and then here i'll just do that path okay let me just make sure that this one built as well and we're all, we should be all good. Okay, so we're, we're good with the client building and this one building. So the first thing that we need to do is just like in any any server, we need to have the server going first. 
So on this one, I'm going to do that net run, which is going to start the new server. So right now, we know that we're waiting for client connections. So we haven't connected any clients. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by connecting one client. So I'm going to do that net run. And this is going to connect to the client if everything works. And let me make sure that everything is working. And I didn't even get any errors. So let me see what I did wrong here, just to make sure. So one of the things that I did wrong is I created threads, but I never started any of the threads. So we need to start the threads, otherwise this is never going to work. <laughs> OK, so it's building, but it's not doing what we want to do. And we can probably do this you know, in a nicer way. But for now, I think, I think it's fine. So and then what I'll do here, I'll just do a new build. Make sure that that compiles. And then I'll just do or that net run, which it should be connecting. And we're still not connecting to the server for some reason. And let me make sure that everything else here looks fine. And I'm just going to double check a couple of things. So we have our threads. We are connecting here. This is running as a background thread. I'm starting each of the threads. And then I'm connecting to the server, the port, and passing in the message. I am also specifying the server and the port, which happens to be the same one. I believe that's the same one that we have here. And I think everything, I think everything looks fine unless this die. Let me try this one more time. I'm going to run it and then run it. All right, so I think I found an issue with the client, and that's why we weren't able to see the messages on the server. So the only line that I missed was the console, the read line. Everything was executing, but we weren't waiting for, basically didn't keep the console open. So what I need to, needed to do is that, and now I have the server up and running. And now if you look in here and I do a run, we are now connecting. So you can see client four is connecting, and then we're sending messages, and then all the clients we're also, basically, we got the connections here on the client count. Let me make sure, oh, it looks like the client count is incorrect on the on the server side because it doesn't show me uh, servers are connecting. I should be seeing four. So let me go ahead and go back to the server and fix that as well. And let me make sure, oh, I see, I didn't, I didn't add the string interpolation here. Let's go back and I'm going to kill this. Start it one more time. I'm going to kill the client, and then I'll just do a .NET run. So you can see the client one was connected, and it was added to our clients. Client two was connected. Client three was connected. Client four. And then we're basically attempting multiple times on, on each client. So you can see there's one message sent there to the server and receive. So this is broadcasting to all the clients. I can also see here's the second time and then the third time. So also for client four, there's three times. So that part is working. And then I'm also getting the messages that, is, that are getting broadcast from the server side. So looks like everything is working, guys. So on the next video, what I'll show you is how we can change this client or keep this client, but also create a Unity project that can communicate to our server. So what's going to end up happening is I'm going to have a U Unity TCP client, a Unity TCP server, and then the other one is going to be a Unity client. So it's actually going to be the real client. This could probably be renamed to something like TCP client, TCP server. And then the other one could be the Unity TCP client. So I'll figure it out. And then on the next video, we can work on it together. Thank you, guys. All right, guys. Thank you very much for watching this video. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions about what I just showed you, please let me know in the comments. Also, be sure to check out GameDev.net because they have amazing resources for game developers. And also find me in Patreon.com where I'm basically posting information about what I'm doing behind the scenes and also early access source code. Thank you very much, guys.